Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Upperville, located in Loudon and Fouquier counties, Virginia, between Union Generals Alfred Pleasanton and Strong Vincent, along with their two cavalry divisions and one infantry brigade. Against them was Confederate Generals Wade Hampton and Beverly Robertson with their four brigades on the 21st of June, 1863, Union cavalry forces had been attempting to penetrate Confederate General Jeb Stuart's cavalry screen in the Blue Ridge Mountains. On June 21st, Union General Buford led his men north and west from Middleburg in a flanking push. Meanwhile, applying pressure in a different area, Union General Gregg rode directly west along the Little River Turnpike. Under his command was one infantry brigade from the 5th Corps. As Gregg traveled the turnpike, he met with Confederate Generals Hampton and Robertson near Goose Creek. The summer's six-week drought had ended with a heavy rainstorm on the night of June 19th. Using the conditions and weather, Gregg's forces easily pushed the Confederate troops back. Buford wasn't faring as well, however, as he had encountered two Confederate brigades and was pinned down. While this happened, Confederate General Stuart ordered back four Confederate brigades from Upperville. Stuart did not expect that Union General Gregg would push harder down the turnpike. This was a move to try to alleviate pressure on Buford. Gregg was able to push Stuart's troopers almost five miles past Upperville and was only slowed down because Confederate General Longstreet had ordered infantry and artillery to help hold Ashby's Gap and support Stuart's cavalry in the process. The combined losses for Aldine, Middleburg, and Upperville were hard on the Union with 827 men killed, wounded, and missing. Confederates suffered as well with more than 510 men killed, wounded, and missing. However, as 2023 has rolled in, we are introducing a new aspect called the News of the Day, where we are trying to give a little bit of color from the reporting of the same papers that reported the battle. We noted an article in the June 23, 1863 issue of the Burlington Daily Times that advertised a public exhibition of laughing gas, a new type of painkiller. Per the article, the laughing gas. Mr. Collins is to give another evening's entertainment with nitrous oxide gas, as will be seen by his advertisement. From arrangements made, we have no doubt the exhibition will be as popular and successful as in other places where the public have not been satisfied with less than a dozen of these peculiar entertainments. This was an interesting time to be sure when nitrous oxide gas was publicly exhibited and tested as entertainment. It is probably a good thing that Nancy Reagan wasn't born yet, otherwise they wouldn't get that fun opportunity, would they? Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.